The HSDS modifier is a selective subdivision tool that allows you to increase mesh resolution only in specific areas instead of subdividing the entire model. So it makes it ideal for local detail enhancements. So unlike the Turbo Smooth, which subdivides the entire model uniformly, this is a non-destructive workflow. It keeps mesh resolution manageable by only adding details where necessary, and it's perfect for adding local detail to organic models like characters, terrains, or fabric folds. All right, up next is the lathe modifier. So this allows us to rotate a 2D shape around an axis to create a 3D object. And what's important is where this axis is. So we can go to the hierarchy and effect pivot. Wherever this is, it's gonna rotate around. So I'm just gonna right click on the X and it's gonna center it. But you can move this around as you please. And then if we go back to the modifier and we add the lathe, you can see we've created the free the object. If we go to perspective, we can see this is a great way to create things like vases, bottles, bowls, table legs, anything really symmetrical. You can see it's currently inside out. So we can flip the normals and you can weld the core if you want. You can cap the ends. You can add more segments. The lattice modifier converts edges of a mesh into struts and this is super useful for creating structural elements for like sci-fi abstract geometry. So I've got this box, it's got five by five by five segments on it and let's add the lattice and you can see exactly what it does. So you've got the struts, so you can change how thick they are. You can change how many segments or how many sides they have. And then you've also got the joints, which are these bits. We can change the radius, we can change the type, and uh, how many segments they have. And you can also do this individually, so you can just have the joints or the struts. The linked X form modifier allows you to transfer transformations from one object to another. So here I've got like a door set up and we're gonna create another object and we'll go to helpers and dummy. And I've got snaps on, so this is just snapping to the corner here. So now I've got a dummy object down here. And if we add the linked X form modifier and we can pick the control point, you can see we haven't had to like move the pivot and now this is our control point for our object. So this is this can be used for like animation. People use it for facial rigging, animating chains and ropes, mechanical parts and stuff like that. So the map scale modifier allows you to maintain the scale of a texture only when resizing the object. So if we apply it, we can change the scale and you can do the offsets here if you want to move them around a little bit and if you select a part of it and move it it scales with the object whereas if we didn't have that on you can see we would get the object would stretch the Mass Effects Rigid Body Modifier is part of 3ds Max's physics system and it allows objects to behave like real world physics driven objects reacting to gravity collisions and forces. So I'm gonna apply it to all of our bricks here. Um, we wanna make sure it's dynamic and we're gonna change the preset to concrete as these are gonna be bricks. And I'm gonna select this plane object which is gonna be basically the collision object. So we'll put the mass effects rigid body on there. But this time we want this to be static and now if we just select our bricks and we hit bake, there's our physics, that's gravity. I've got another video that shows you how to do loads of stuff with this as well that you can check out. The material modifier allows you to assign different material IDs to an object or parts of an object without manually selecting and setting them in an editable poly. So this is especially useful when working with multi-sub objects, which we have over here, where different areas of the model need to be different textures. So I've got four colors in a multi-sub and that is applied to our cube. And then what we can do is add the material modifier and then you can see as I change these, um, they change. This can be done at the sub object level. And what's cool about this is you can actually animate 
uh, the material ID so we can set that first frame as one and we'll have this one on two three and four and now when we scroll through the material will change color the material by element modifier allows you to assign random material ids to different elements within a single object so let's add that and i've got my uh, multi sub with four different colors in it and this is applied to our object so this is all one object and what we can do is put randomize distribution on and if we change the id you can see we're just using one and two now but we can use four we can change the seed on that so that's going to randomize it some more and then you can also have the frequency of how often these will will turn up the M cloth is a mass effects based cloth simulation tool in 3ds max and unlike uh, the cloth modifier M cloth is faster interactive and works with rigid body systems so ideal for creating realistic fabric so let's apply that to this plane I've made the plane has quite a lot of segments and we will you can change the parameters here or you can load uh, we're going to load cotton and we want to make sure it's dynamic and then we're going to select our box again this is our collision object so this time it will be a mass effects rigid body which we looked at earlier and we'll make this static and then we can select our cloth again and we're going to hit bake and now we got a lovely cloth simulation and we can also unbake that and we can also use live drag so that simulates and then we can use our mouse to drag this around into a better position so that is super powerful the melt modifier lets you apply a realistic melting effect to all object types so once it's applied you can change the amount here you can change the uh, percentage of melt and you can change whether it's like jelly plastic glass so let's leave it on let's try jelly and another cool thing we can do oh you can also change the axis so we can squash it like so but let's leave that on the z and what we can do we can keyframe it so we'll put it that first frame and then let's say in like 60 frames let's have this at 100 so that is now keyframed and if i have press play we now have a melting vespa so all of these modifiers help us work quicker and improve our work and you know what else helps me work quicker and improves my work skillshare who are kindly sponsoring today's video it's the largest online community for creatives with thousands of classes from industry experts across fields such as design, business and much more. Skillshare has thousands of courses including rendering, animation and CGI, including 14 by yours truly covering everything from V-Ray to AI workflows. And if you want to venture out of your industry, then Skillshare has got you covered too. When I wanted to improve these videos for YouTube, I took Marquez Brownlee's YouTube classes and look, you're watching this video now and the best part is that the first 500 people who click the link in my description get one month free so click that link and get started now